Um, so I'll be showing our progress, our company's progress, my my and our development in uh, making aquaponics alive. First, my beginnings were my, uh, my beginning was uh, tackling with uh, hydroponics first. Um, so growing, growing greeneries and uh, hydroponics using using mineral solution, solutions. Um, and I was always more, more inclined to, uh, towards the biological growing, natural growing. That's why I was looking for a natural source of uh, um, fertilizer. And that's why I've set up a small, a small uh, aquarium in my living room, <laughs> which was the first big mistake. Why? <laughs> because you have to uh, always listen to the pumps running. <laughs> You're always scared of uh, leaks. There's a noise, yeah. And yeah, that, those are two major uh, concerns. What about floodings? Yeah, I, I told you, leaks. Yeah, leaks. Floods, yeah. yeah. Uh, luckily, there were none here. Uh, also, as you can see, a lot of strangely connected pipes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I wanted to have as much flow as possible. I didn't calculate anything. I just wanted as much flow to get as much oxygen into the water, which turned out also to be a mistake. It should be dangerous also to have the electricity under the water. <laughs> <laughs> which electricity? You, you can uh, the flow. The, the <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> 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 there was also a light underneath for the fish. So what? there was also a, a light mounted under, under there. So even better. Uh, yeah. Um, just wanted to show how much flow I, I got to that to that small aquarium. <laughs> Can you see anything? Not much. But I made like a double floor. Uh, I made a double floor for removing solids, which lately, uh, and I used uh, lava rocks, which are really uh, sharp. They have sharp edges, uh, and that was also a problem for for the fish because they got scraped and uh, got illnesses because of that. Later, mm. one another mistake was I was being being really cheap, so I. I salvaged an old um, aquarium, which lately leaked and flooded my neighbor's apartment underneath. <laughs> but it took it was in another room. Um, this was the first fish introduced. Um, another mistake that was made here was uh, using uh, tap water. Tap water in our country, in most of our country, is really hard. So you have basically no control over the pH of uh, the water. I tried to solve the problem with uh, using uh, peat to, to lower the pH, but the re resistance was futile. Um, this, this were the, the first roots. Uh, grown on my basil. Um, I think there were still no not no uh, nutrients in the water here. Basically, growing on water, just rooting. That's how it looked in the in the other room. Fish not being so happy, but okay. <laughs> um, this is what I showed also in Gran Canaria. Um, this was my first encounter with uh, uh, nutrient deficiencies in aquaponics. First, when you, I read the comments on the internet and so the, the aquaponics was supposed to be some magic solution where everything grows splendid. Um, this was the, the first proof that that's not true. Um, 
those are heavy signs of uh, iron, lack, lack, lack of iron. Um, so I met um, fellow people of Backyard Aquaponics, it's a forum, you probably know of it, um, where they, they showed me what to do and uh, so I added chelated iron to the system and things started thriving. Another mistake I made in the, in the process was uh, using, reading the label on the chelated iron uh, package uh, where the, the dosage was meant for uh, soil application. So I, instead of adding uh, two, 2 ppm's, I added 3000 ppm's. So oh, the fish, as you, as you can imagine, were happy. Um, here's another problem, um, I don't think you can see, but there are a lot of solids that uh, started to accumulate on the, the roots, um, which in the long term uh, suffocates the roots. That's why solid uh, removal is so important, in, uh, especially in deep, in deep water culture systems. This is, I think, a little bit later on. Um, and I started experimenting a little bit with uh, tomatoes and microgreens. I think I already used tilapia in this, yeah, in that time. <coughs> they are more hardly fish, so they could tolerate my mistakes a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> microgreens again. So. I learned quite a few uh, lessons, beginner's lessons, uh, from, from this system. Um, so after I, I tweaked the system to the point that uh, I got something out of it, uh, I got encouraged. Although I saw a big problem in growing indoors, uh, because all the pests and diseases wanted indoors also. So there, it was a constant battle with strips, uh, mites, and if it's and whatnot. Um, so this is at my parents' home. We had a garage uh, that was empty on the top, um, and I got an idea, an idea, an idea to to use it for something useful. Um, and <coughs> we started building it, and you can see another mistake here. <laughs> Um, the, there's like, I think, a meter or a, a little bit more uh, in difference from here and I had to pump the water from like it was a meter to the, to the, to the grow, grow beds that were, used, uh, that, that were later placed on the top and I was, and there was also all, already a big head difference <coughs> which meant later on that I'll have to, have to use quite a big pump, a strong pump to pump the whole system. Um, we've set up the, the greenhouse and then started building the system inside. Um, I used mostly, um, I reused the materials that I could get either I or at home or the, the, drum, the, the drums uh, from the guys that were collecting them. You can see my, my mistakes here again. I didn't calculate uh, how much power I need and um, what should the pipes be and so on, the, the things that we were doing yesterday. Um, I didn't really dive in into the theory of it. So I made the really long lines that were so the fish tank was located under the, the, this, uh, the, under the floor and the water had to be pumped onto the main line here and then distributed over to the, the side branches and it took like, I think almost three bars of pressure to supply the water to the, to the, uh, to the small system and the pump was like 750 watts um, strong. Um, 
So then, then I started to tackle with the siphons. Uh, again, no info on the ciphers, no real uh, data that I could grab and use. So I just had to start from from the beginning, actually, with the siphons. Um, this is again another problem emerging. I used the the river bad gravel I was talking about yesterday um, that has a lot of uh, magnesium and calcium inside. And that problem lasted for, I think, almost two years or something before I figure out, figured out what was wrong. And that's the pump, high pressure pump, <coughs> running the system. Um, I started cycling with uh, urea here, and I also thought that uh, the thing would just grow on itself, but they didn't. This this uh, situation lasted for I think a few months. I think really grew. Um, you can see here I used a mixture of uh, ornamental fish and um, trout. Adrian was probably talking before uh, about different uh, requirements of different uh, species of fish. I was again deluded here because I used trouts and summer was uh, getting closer closer, and I thought, ah, there's a life, this is magic system again. <laughs> but it, again, they didn't. So, and when the, the temperatures rose over 20 and got to the 24 uh, area, it was over for them, sadly. This is the first year of growing. It was doing pretty good. Had my first cauliflower flower, which you can see already shows some signs of lack of uh, nutrients on the the outer leaves. Tom could tell you. Tom can tell us what's the what's the problem here. What's the problem on, on this leaf? Can you see it? Magnesium. Yeah. Uh, there was probably a lot of magnesium in the system <laughs> because of the stones, but it was probably not uh, available because of the high pH. Yeah. But yeah. It's quite nice cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, you know, a picture, you can make a picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> And when was it that the cauliflower is covered with the leaves? Because if the, the white part gets sunlight, it turns brown and, uh, yeah. or like uh, yellow. Mm -hmm. When did you take this, those pictures? When was it? I mean, the, I think it was. The or you mean the time in the year? Yeah. It was. I think it was right before uh, spring or in the middle of the spring, somewhere there. March. No, uh, which year? Which year? Yeah. Uh, I think this was the first year of growing. And when did you start? This is from 2007, I think. Or 2008, probably. <coughs> I don't know. I think this is uh, autumn con coming in. Now, as you can see, you, s you can see the fishness is. Everywhere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what? The periodic system of deficiency. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I was still optimistic, as I always am. Um, this was my first attempt at uh, my bachelor's degree uh, growing, um, how do you say, Blitwood. Mangold. Yeah, mangold and uh, lettuce. And I had a side comparison with <laughs> this is the mangold growing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> like plants. Yeah, I didn't show the picture. Uh, it's the, the, the soil, a part of the test was here. Uh, and it was growing like crazy there uh, with the mineral fertilizer. But also, but 
uh, the salads were pretty much the same. That was the, the optimistic part that kept me going. Why did you put the solar part in the, in the last house, in the green house? Because of, uh, I wanted to have the same conditions. Mm -hmm. to, So this is the, the, the time when I figure out, figured out what's the problem with my substrate um, and the, I bought uh, some other uh, river stones, river gravel that was uh, almost without uh, calcium and magnesium and uh, I, had, I rearranged the system a little bit, uh, also added some solids remo removal of filtration. Um, and the things practically boomed from the starts. They grew, they grew much, much better than in uh, the old substrate. Still using the same pump and Using pipes. the same what? Pump and pipes and... No, no, no. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's why I rearranged the whole thing. Uh, the system now runs on 40 watts. Uh, because the, the whole piping was done differently. Um, I used uh, gra gravel uh, gravity to, to 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 deliver the water to the beds and so on. So, but where are the fish? The fish are in the blue tanks. Yeah, yeah. In the, the same level. Mm -hmm. They are the same level now. A little bit higher. Yeah, a bit higher. Mm -hmm. But not much. Yeah, they are on the same level with the system. Yeah, that's what you meant. And that's a sedimentary made. With yeah. A, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <coughs> so you can see the how I know what was the difference because things really grew well. There was a lot less uh, deficiencies uh, seen. Um, this is few few. I think this is from two years ago maybe. Uh, I've added some. Uh, this was an experiment with. Uh, Strawberries. A strawberry producer approached us and uh, said, "We can, if we can make, uh, if we can make something work with strawberries." Uh, he already had the locust labs growing uh, uh, hydroponic growing uh, uh, strawberries, and uh, he had mm, big problems with um, having too much salt uh, in the. In the soil, that's why. What, that's why she uh, he got uh, he started using um, cocoa, um, but the cocoa was uh, the cocoa slabs were uh, just too expensive for him, and he was searching for uh, an alternative, um, and that's why he contacted us and we started an experiment, which is still ongoing. Uh, how the, the, the strawberries will, will do in hydroton and with, in gravel uh, and everything run on the nutrients from fish. Um, this is the, the other part of the experiment, using just trays filled with gravel. Um, and, yeah? It, the hydroton is on the vert vertical growing? There's half of this bed is filled with gravel, half of, half of it is filled with uh, hydroton. Uh -huh. And the vertical is with the, the yeah, vertical the tower. Tower. He's talking about the toes. It's also filled with uh, hydroton, just hydroton, yeah. Because the, the pots are made from uh, EPS, and then it's, it's, if I filled them with the gravel, they were a bit too heavy. Um, there are a lot of data on uh, on the yields, the yields, uh, but they still waiting for me to analyze them. Sorry, I can't tell tell you much uh, what's really happening in that direction. Um, but things were really growing really well. Um, this is also major. Um, is booming in this bed, beds. <coughs> and now this is the first 
commercial size system. <laughs> That's, uh, I think this was our the first system we sold, we sold as a company. Um, um, a guy, I think he wanted to grow some weed on it, <laughs> contacted us. He didn't say why, but what for, but I suspected it was that. Uh, what his grandfather? His voice or his... Ah, just his eyes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, his grandfather lent him the money so he can start tackling this and making it into a business. I haven't heard since from him, so I don't know. <laughs> but this was the first thing we, we, we sold. Um, this was the second system I designed for um, catering service. It's a catering service. Yeah. service. Um, and the boss had an idea to have a hydroponic system um, present in the in the the room, the space where they they had uh, caterings and such. Um, but the problem here was um, she she left. The, the whole uh, business around aquaponics to a guy that was, uh, he was like, I don't know, project manager at the catering service. And he apparently had no sense of uh, design. In, I mean, in, how do you say? In making, in seeing the, what's that Interior design, yeah. <laughs> So he just blankly said, yeah, yeah, that's it, looks good. Uh, <laughs> the first plan was to, to set up this in, in, a, in, a, in a cellar. Uh, then we, we made the whole system, started putting it up, putting it up and then the boss uh, showed up and saw the system and said, oh, oh, <laughs> this won't go with our, uh, with our graphical image. So the system never got built, uh, never got assembled. It's built, but not assembled. So. It was a fail um, and a lesson in asking more questions. You have to ask a lot and really talk to the to the one who's giving the money. Um, this was uh, our co-worker Maya got uh, into the business with with me and Vesna because she wanted she wanted to make a really nice nice looking system to put it under her aquarium in the room and this was one of one of my designs uh, on how to implement that although I never believed in using aquariums anymore because I'm, I'm sick of it uh, but I'm, <laughs> this is what I made and we went to a company that wanted to invest in making a plastic mold. I'm really happy that that didn't happen because. because uh, <laughs> what was the plan right now? Uh, they, did they have? We have to invest. Did they want us to invest? Yeah, know. they want us to invest because they would otherwise uh, need to change the whole line of the production because of this. Yeah, it's a very exceptional shape of it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, but I think the plan. The story, basically. I think the plan was they wanted to invest like fifty thousand euros into the production of this model, yeah. and they wanted from us I don't know how many ten thousands of euros. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we got scared of the money, luckily, and went on from here. Mm -hmm. But uh, later on, like three, four years later, or three years later, later. Uh, no, I think the, if you know Knauf Company, <coughs> you know Knauf Company. It makes, yeah. makes it makes the gypsum ceilings. Uh, anyway, um, they make a similar uh, modular modular board uh, like this. It's this this one is made from I think uh, fifty times fifty centimeters, and you can you could put it together and everything. And they, and they made a similar thing and. Um, we were already talking with them a little bit on reviving the idea of using it for a uh, aquarium uh, filtration system. But for now, we have other things in mind. This was our next project. Um, it was kind of 
my dream from from the start. I, I, I from the beginning I started uh, tacking with uh, aquaponics on a little bit bigger scale to use the solar greenhouse concept. Um, and we were lucky to get uh, an kind of an investor to go in us with us in this story. Mm. So we started building. Uh, so let's get to the problems again. I like to talk. I like to talk about problems. There are a lot of them. Um, challenges, challenges. No. Problems and challenges. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <coughs> It's, it was, as we found out, it was really important uh, to make contracts with uh, your subcontractors um, and to, yeah, that, that was the, the main problem actually, because uh, we, we paid him in, in, in advance and after he got the money, all, there were just problems all the way. The first problem here was... Uh, I draw him uh, a plan, um, and as it turned out, he didn't know how to read the plans. Uh, he didn't know how to read the, the right angle of this, this side, which was supposed to be uh, the right angle to capture the, the most sun in the winter. Um, so, after they set it up, I asked, I asked him before, are you sure this, this angle is the correct one? Mm -hmm. He said, yeah, yeah, of course. Um, but later on, I, I took a picture and measured it on the on the on the picture, and the angle was totally off. He he misread the plan. Anyway, uh, the second thing uh, here was uh, I wasn't there when they uh, started to put the the greenhouse up, and the owners decided to turn the greenhouse the other way. <laughs> oh, no. Instead of turning it towards the, the, the south, as I, as I showed them, they said, no, no, it won't look good. And they didn't ask me further from there. And they just set up, and it's, it now looks towards the, the west, practically. So, big, big fail for a solar greenhouse. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had to go on from there. After the, the greenhouse got fixed, the, the, the angle got fixed, we still had to wait for the guy to, to finish the work for like, I don't know, one or two months. Uh, we just started building without the foil then. Um, this is, I don't know how many months later on. In between, there was another project that, that is, that is uh, still ongoing. And, uh, we were visiting it, visiting it in, the, in Prefmuria with Tom and uh, Rob. It's the commercial size system, so they intertwined because of um, our or my wrong decision uh, on the contractor that made the greenhouse. Because we were waiting for him to finish this greenhouse uh, and we were supposed to finish this in, in, in a month. and. Uh, as we were waiting him, the other projects showed, showed up and started, we started um, doing on, uh, working on that project. And this project just waited for months and months and months. A big headache. Um, in the, somewhere in between that, uh, we got uh, a small, small contract. Uh, a guy just wanted us to show him how to build a small system for him. And so we went there and showed him how to do it. Again, the problem here is that um, the aquaponics story is mostly told as something really self-sustainable, low maintenance and tra -la -la. And the guy, after a year, he didn't want to uh, to, to use the systems anymore. They were performing okay, but uh, he had to feed, every, feed the fish every day, he had to monitor the water quality and so on, and he got sick of it and, and he said that he'll just go, he'll just, he'll just go back to the soil. Um, so that's, that's one as aspect of uh, 
Aquaponics. It was a uh, one thousand. Huh? It was a uh, one IBC. Yeah, we, ju we just built one for him on site, yeah. and he built uh, I think <laughs> two more, two more by himself. He just wanted to see how it is done. So we just um, I don't know what we made for him the siphons and something like that. So going even deeper, deeper now. <laughs> Um, these were the first plans uh, for our kind of commercial size pilot project. Um, the first, uh, at first, uh, we wanted to build it really near Ljubljana, um, and the first problems we encountered encountered, encountered were. Uh, Spatial plans. Uh, so we wanted to set it up in the middle of the in the middle of the city to make urban plan, urban, urban farming. And I was going practically every week a few times to to the spatial planning office and talking to them and uh, trying to incorporate this project into into a, a space we we got we could rent in the middle of the city. Was empty, but it was meant for building uh, apartments, and the, the thing is still in the same in the same situation as it was before, because there was there is practically no money for building those uh, apartments. So a few months passed for nothing, not not for nothing. I learned about spatial planning a lot. Um, uh, the concept was also a little bit similar to solar greenhouse, so it's the, the whole thing was uh, orientated on the long side towards uh, the south, uh, based on uh, practically there were no other sedimentation devices here that uh, the gravel bed filters, and the rest is just deep water culture. Mm, so many holes. Uh, anyway, this was so many holes in the planning. So many mistakes. Um, How long ago was this? This was two years ago, probably. Uh, and this is the this is when the investor contacted us. Uh, we went to the site and. <laughs> I saw the space where where they they set the we could set, set up the the whole thing, and no, I didn't think even think that we could make that we should make some uh, tests on what is the geological uh, construction under this because we have like almost 80 tons of uh, water uh, burdening the, the the soil underneath. And this later on turned out as a, again a big mistake. So the whole I, I, the whole project was approached like we can do it everything everything by ourselves. Um, like as as we wanted to have as as less subcontractors as possible. Um, here was another thing. Uh, listening to investors is really a bad thing um, because he wanted to use the place as, as efficiently as possible, and he had an idea that we could, if we can build the the rain catchment system under the the, the solar panels. So I started working on that and making the whole construction. And things just complicated more from from that on. Uh, I was going to uh, static uh, engineers to, to talk about them with uh, if the construction will hold so much water and so on. It was meant we wanted to build a 250 cubic meters uh, rain rain catchment system. It was meant uh, mostly for uh, supplying water to the to our system, and the rest would go to to an orchard uh, up there. 
So after a month of dealing with this again, uh, when the investor saw that it was not a good idea, that there was a possibility of <laughs> tearing down his uh, solar panels, uh, again a lot of work for nothing. Um, so then we just basically started building. What do you think? I was also uh, a construction, I became a construction engineer amongst other other things, <laughs> drawing plans for construction work. And since we didn't we didn't make any uh, probes on what what is the soil, the soil constitutive constituted of <coughs> made of underneath, we just later uh, after that, we found out that this, the whole hill, the whole region here, is mostly big, big deposits of clay. Which means that when there is rain, uh, the whole the whole thing can just go uh, down down the hill. Um, so after this was built, we had to dig underneath and put pilots in. Uh, so we fixed the the, the problem and the, the the whole thing, but that costed us ten thousand euros more, I think, than it should. Um, yeah, this is uh, then the other location for the rain catchment system. Again, same problem. <laughs> we put now we can put now pilots in here. And uh, after after winter, the whole the whole region here uh, went down for about 30 centimeters. So that's one thing we still have to fix. Looks good, but again, yeah, this is still the pain from from the from the past. This is the same contractor that made us the, the solar greenhouse. We already paid at the time him this the big uh, part of the, this uh, bigger greenhouse, and we then found out that his whole firm was constituted of him and his wife, and uh, they they tried to cover the our greenhouse, uh, but you can see how it ended up. Again, this mistake costed us 5,000 euros um, because he didn't want to, to finish the job at uh, the time. And uh, we were in a hurry, the investor was already pressing onto us, so we had to pay out. And then we started building. Again, as you can see on the floor, we have like a really fine, fine uh, sand here. Yeah. Which turned out to be a problem, a big problem in many ways. Um, one was when you when you put together the pipes, you have sand, sand everywhere, scraping the pipes. Um, and the other is it's just it's just not as uh, as sturdy as it should be. So uh, again, our legislations don't allow you to to make any concrete foundation in a greenhouse. But I later found out that everyone does it and just doesn't give a shit about the legislations. So I'll know that for next time. Uh, it's, it actually looks small here, but uh, when I looked it through my eyes, it started to get big and I saw how much work we have to put in it. So. How many square square meters? The whole thing is 400 square meters. It's 40 meters long and 10 wide. Um, this is setting up the the deep water canal. Um, it's, it's fully insulated, covering it, covering it up with the <laughs> with the foil. Um, again, our first time doing it. Uh, was quite a challenge. Gaspar and Kevin are laughing because they know. <laughs> <laughs> I will mean, check the tears. Yeah. Um, 
another problem I saw here, I can see here is uh, the, 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 the installation of uh, electric cables wasn't finished here and later on uh, when, they, when, they, when they came uh, finishing, it, finishing it up uh, there was a big problem because of the um, they were drilling and the drills were falling onto the foil and uh, which is a big no-no in the future mm -hmm. yeah, I think this is the finishing up the covering of it and then we still have to finish the, the whole fish part the aquaculture part of it mm. so much work put into it so much work uh, this is one big mistake I made again as, a, as an engineer. <laughs> um, I wanted to save space <laughs> and I put the, the whole pump extension underground. And there was, there was one, one occurring when we used this, this uh, right pump for, um, for watering the plants. And I forgot to open a valve after I finished the work and the pump was, was just like this is the, the intake of the pump and this is the, the outtake and I forgot to, to, to open this valve and uh, the whole pump overheated, melted this fitting here oh. and flooded the whole, the whole thing, uh, like I think three cubic meters of something of water just got soaked into the whole thing. Um, luckily, I, I saved the pumps, so there was just a few headaches. This is again, I wanted to show here uh, of how important it is to trust your gut and not uh, allow be, uh, to be pushed by anyone. Like in this in this instance, it was the investor that was pushing to use to somehow um, uh, compensate with the firm that was selling uh, heating systems uh, with his firm. And firstly, we, we talked to, to this guy who makes who makes the the pallet burners and set up sets up the whole thing. And my gut with this with this guy was that he's really good. He knows what he's doing, and he was really just interesting in going into the story with us. But I said uh, to the to the investor, "Okay, do it your way. Let's do it your way. Let's bring in the <clears throat> the other company." And the other company later uh, turned out to sell crappy uh, pallet burners. Well, the whole heating system is not as uh, as reliable as it should be, uh, and the, the guy who owns the company said it himself that the the, the whole how do you say the this such a pitch furnace, furnace oh. yeah the whole furnace uh, is shitty is not not completely shitty but it has like major some major flaws in the construction uh, in the design itself so again. Listen to your guts when you do things like that. This is the uh, first filling of the bio filters. Um, I think this is the first uh, water put in, into the system. Um, another problem here was I wanted to make, make everything look as elegant as possible. So I, I've put the, the piping system under the floor. The problem with that is, if you have leaks or anything like that, you're screwed here. So we have to go on your knees and climb underneath and do all the repairs there. So, big, big issue that I solved, but in the future it won't be done like this. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what I wanted to show you here. Just a nice, nice picture. <laughs> mm. I haven't found other pictures from 
the process in between. Uh, we started the, the whole system and uh, our plan was to to get fingerlings every month, I think, to get new fingerlings, fingerlings and to put out uh, uh, the, the, old, the old fish, the, the, the consumer size fish out and put uh, a new batch of uh, fingerlings inside. Which, which species you think? Uh, large, large amount uh, bass. And the problem is with that was that you can't find them in Slovenia since they are illegal. Um, we legalize them because we have a closed loop system, but in, it's not allowed in open waters because it can survive the winter and it's a big. It's, it's a predator to other fish. Um, it's considered as an invasive species of fish. Yeah. Really? Yeah. In, in yeah. Slovenia? Yeah, in Slovenia, mm. yes. Yeah. Are you talking about large mouth bass? Microptelus uh, salmonis. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we need to get the environmental impact assessment. It's quite surprising that it was. It's, it's not a lot in Slovenia. It's not in the There is no, there is no in, in lakes? Exactly. You don't have in in natural pond? No. We have them. We have them, but not legally. Not legally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's quite, it's quite strange. So you can buy them legally. Because in Italy there is there is a lot of large mass in They are also in Austria. Yeah. So it's just our legislation. Yeah. And That's you found you found a hatchery to to, to buy it? We later found a hatchery in uh, Austria, but the problem is that their fingerlings are only available either in, uh, in spring, in the spring, or later. In yeah, the no, no, you're right. In, not in spring. In it's the, in, in both times. Right. You can get it. You can get them in spring and in later in the fall. Uh, so again, um, we didn't check enough enough uh, before that. So. We've been running the system without fish for too long and the, the plants started to suffer. So our, our short-term solution is now, now uh, just to use uh, hydroponic uh, fertilizer to grow, to grow the, the plants uh, so we can sell them further. We had one, um, I think we had two, uh, two, two croppings. Harvesting. 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 Yeah. Two harvests uh, for now. But after that, the, the, there were just not, not enough nutrients in it, so now we're, we're putting in a hydroponic solution. Um, so that's, that's a major concern in, uh, in starting aquaponic, uh, uh, especially coupled systems, because from the start you, you just have to use a hydroponic solution if you want to sell the produce from the start. Uh, there is no other way. So that's again another inclination towards the decoupled system. Okay. That's it. Okay.